Hauntings are a funny thing. No one really understands what causes them, and while there are many theories as what constitutes to a haunting, no one is really sure. But can paintings be haunted, or is this some sort of Luigi's Mansion fantasy? Much like the belief of other haunted objects, could they gain attachments or somehow manifest intense energies? In this video, I'll cover some of the world's most haunted paintings and some of the horrific stories associated with them. Hi, I'm Mike, and if you've got your K to it already, let's go find some ghosts. Chapter 1 The Crying Boy The Crying Boy, or to be more exact, Crying Children, are a series of paintings depicting crying orphan children from artist Bruno Amadio. The paintings were created in the 1950s and for some reason published under the name Giovanni Bragolin. Prints of the paintings became very popular in the 1970s, with many households not considering it gaudy or in poor taste to have a picture of a crying child hung on your living room wall. There is one painting in particular that seems to be the most popular when searching for information around the Crying Boy paintings, and that is the one that's associated with the actual hauntings. And it is said that an alarming number of houses that had this picture in them caught fire inexplicably, often with the painting or print of the Crying Boy being untarnished by the flames. It is believed that the child in the painting lost both of their parents in a fire, and the painting retained some kind of curse that would cause fires to break out in the homes that it was displayed in. In 1985, the Sun newspaper in the UK published a story called The Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy, which associated the painting with a series of chip pan fires, burning homes to ash with only the painting surviving these instances even to the point that an unnamed firefighter from Essex came forward and said that they had attended 15 house fires where the painting had been present and had survived the fire. Belief in the painting's curse was so widespread that the Sun newspaper encouraged its readers to send their copies to be burned in a mass bonfire, which really gives weight to the term fighting fire with fires. Other stories include two sisters and their mother from Kilburn in London, all suffered house fires after purchasing copies of the painting and hanging them in their homes and a woman from Forest Hill, London, who blamed destroying her copy of the painting for the loss of her son, daughter, husband and mother in separate fire-related incidents. And these are just a small section of stories of home burnings related to the crying boy picture. There are many more, often with other weird or eerie circumstances. Another story or theory is to get the child to cry for the purpose of having their portrait painted. Bruno Amadio would subject the children to things that I can't mention in this video through fear of the YouTube gods striking me down, but I'll let you use your imagination as to what they were. For me personally, there are an alarming number of fires that are attributed to the crying boy painting. However, a lot of these fires seem to be actually related to chip pans and chip pans are notorious for being incredibly dangerous and easily starting fires. They're still the cause of thousands of house fires each year to this day. And due to this, I'm inclined to believe that a lot of the fires would have happened even with or without the crying boy being an association to the house. But saying that, that doesn't excuse a lot of households for willingly hanging a traumatized child in their house, let alone how creepy the painting is. Chapter two, the hands resist him. The Hands Resist Him, also known as the eBay Haunted Painting, was created by Bill Stoneham in 1972, and the painting depicts a young boy stood against a glass panel door or window with phantom hands behind him and a smaller girl to the side of him. But on closer look, the girl appears to be some kind of puppet or ventriloquist doll with visible joints around her knees and elbows and empty eye sockets. This was a horrifying feature that I discovered while researching this video, and it adds an extra level of creepiness to an already allegedly haunted painting. The painting is said to represent the dividing line between our world and the possibilities of the beyond, with the creepy doll girl representing some kind of guide between the two worlds. Originally, the painting was given to an art gallery owner and art critic by Stoneham in 1972, and within a year both the gallery owner and art critic had died of mysterious causes despite being perfectly healthy. From there, the hauntings around the painting only get more bizarre. The painting was first purchased by the actor John Morley, who is known for playing Jack Waltz in The Godfather. After some strange events happening around it, he cast the painting into an old brewery, where it was discovered after his death by a Californian couple. Immediately, they would remark that there was a haunting aura around the image. For years, they claimed that the hands literally moved, as if to pull the boy in the picture and the viewer into the black abyss beyond the glass door frame. The painting gained its reportedly haunted status when it was listed on eBay in the year 2000, with a description implying that it was haunted. 
They decided to sell the painting and the original eBay listing states as follows. When we received this painting, we thought it was really good art. A picker had found it abandoned behind an old brewery. At the time we wondered a little why a seemingly perfectly fine painting would be discarded like that. Today we don't. One morning our four and a half year old daughter claimed that the children in the picture were fighting and coming into the room during the night. The couple would also claim to catch glimpses of the boy seemingly trying to escape the painting while the hands would claw behind him. The couple would even go as far to set up a motion-triggered camera to monitor the painting, and on the third night of monitoring it, they could claim they could see the boy trying to exit the painting under threat. The eBay listing also came with a disclaimer stating the following. Warning, do not bid on this painting if you are susceptible to stress-related disease, faint of heart, or are unfamiliar with supernatural events. By bidding on this painting, you agree to release the owners of all liability in relation to the sale or any events happening after the sale that might be contributed to this painting. This painting may or may not possess supernatural powers that could impact or change your life. However, by bidding you agree to exclusively bid on the value of the artwork, with disregard to the last two photos featured in this auction, and hold the owners harmless in regard to them and their impact, expressed or implied. This caused a minor hysteria on the internet with the painting being sold for $1,025. And interestingly, Stoneham has created a sequel to this painting called Resistance at the Threshold, which depicts the characters much further into the future. Some personal thoughts on this. Aside from the couple's stories about the haunting, there is nothing to indicate that the painting is actually haunted. And despite the painting looking very creepy, if there is a video of the boy from it trying to escape, where is it? If you had categorical proof of this happening, you would post it somewhere to prove the alleged hauntings of this painting. To me, this sounds like a spooky story made up around an already creepy painting to try and sell it for some more money. Oh, and that reminds me, I have this haunted Yankee candle here that will light itself if you leave it in a locked room for three days. Shall we start the bidding at, say, £530? And if you can't afford to bid on it, you can always subscribe to my channel, which is absolutely free. Chapter 3 The Anguished Man Not a great deal is known about this horrific painting's origins. The Anguished Man is said to have been painted by an unknown artist who mixed his own blood into the paint and then unlifed himself shortly after completing the painting. Irrespective if any of that is true or not, this painting is possibly the most unsettling and hardest thing to view on this list. It appears to depict a man who's missing his skin, eyes and teeth and has a pained expression on his face. It's absolutely disgusting and personally I really don't like looking at this thing. The painting found its way into the hands of a man from Cumbria, UK called Sean Robinson who claimed that he had inherited the painting from his grandmother who had told him the previous history I've just told you. Sean's grandmother was convinced that the painting was haunted having seen a dark figure in her house many times and citing that the painting was the source of some strange noises. Most often these noises were the sound of a man crying and Sean was initially skeptical until his wife also began hearing a man crying in their house and seeing dark figures moving around. Much like the previous chapter with the hands resist him, a camera was set up to monitor the painting in a locked room. Over three nights between the hours of 1am and 5pm, Sean recorded the usual banging noises but on the second night the painting appeared to fall over on its own accord. Sean claimed that there were no drafts or wind in the room and that the painting was stood up against a wall so shouldn't have been able to fall over at all and since this event he has locked the painting away in storage. Sometime in the future Sean worked with mediums John Blackburn and Ian Lawman taking the painting around some of England's most haunted locations such as 35 Stonegate in York and Chillingham Castle where it was claimed that during a seance a large black figure appeared in the middle of a circle of people. A large wooden bench was also said to bang on the floor in response to John Blackburn's questions before being flipped upside down. This was witnessed by approximately 20 people. Personal feeling time? Again, a lot of these stories only come from one family and I'm not entirely sure how there could be any merit in the painting's origin story if the artist was unknown. Like many paranormal events, it's really, really difficult to say whether something happened unless you've witnessed it firsthand. But saying that, that doesn't take away from how disgusting and disturbing this painting is though. Chapter 4 Love Letters As a stark contrast to The Anguished Man, Love Letters is a painting that I think is a fantastic piece of art and is very easy on the eye. 
which in some ways makes it even more weird that it's allegedly haunted. All of the other entries on this list seem to have had something unsettling about them and that doesn't seem to be the case with this Love Letters painting. Interestingly, there seems to be some discussion around the haunted version of the painting. The haunted version isn't the original but is rather a recreation by the artist Richard King, and the painting depicts a young girl holding a bouquet of flowers in one hand and a love letter in the other. The haunting of the love letters painting is said to originate from 1887, when a United States Senator's four-year-old daughter, Samantha, died at the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas, after tripping and falling down a flight of stairs while chasing a ball. She reportedly looked very similar to the girl in the love letters painting, leading some people to believe that her spirit got trapped inside the painting when she died. And guests at the Driscoll Hotel have reported that the girl's expression changes after staring at the painting for an extended period of time. Or the feeling that the girl's eyes follow you around the room. Some guests have also reported feeling ill after looking at the painting or having the feeling like they're being lifted off their feet. The reality is that the girl in the image isn't Samantha at all, and the recreation of the painting happened many, many years after she had lived and died. It is entirely possible, however, that the recreation of the painting was purchased because the girl looked like Samantha and is now haunted in some way because of that. But saying that, there are a lot of hauntings associated with this painting and conflicting stories as to what actually happened. What's also very odd is it seems almost impossible to track down pictures of the original painting online. And that makes me doubt that there ever was an original painting or if that portion of the story was just made up to make it seem even weirder. Chapter 5 the stagecraft. The final painting on this video is a lesser known one and at first glance it's a little more unassuming than some of the other previous paintings covered in this video, but when looking closer at the painting there appears to be an eerie spectral figure to the left of the stagecoach. They are missing a head and their hands appear to be tied behind their back giving the impression that they've been hung. The painting is actually an adaptation of a photograph taken by commercial photographer James Kidd and later painted by the artist Laura P in 1994. The original photo was actually examined by Kodak who couldn't find any signs of tampering or doctoring in any way. Laura claims that she was drawn to the photo and said that she had to paint it but also admits to feeling uneasy along the way. And upon completion of the painting, Laura claims that some strange things started happening around her house. Laura decided to take the painting to a local business and its installation lasted approximately three days before the business basically asked her to take it back and workers at the business had claimed that the painting had moved on its own, hanging crookedly on multiple occasions even after being straightened and important papers that were stored near the painting started to go missing. Laura decided to take the painting back home where the spooky activity continued even after she moved house in 1995. This included a mysterious leak in the garage roof that the roofers seemed unable to fix despite looking into it on three separate occasions. Laura's husband asked where the ghost painting was and it was leaning on a wall between the living room and the garage and upon moving the painting the leak mysteriously stopped. Other odd things that seemed to happen was salt spilling itself all over the kitchen counter, a large gate falling off of its post for no apparent reason and a hazy white figure joining Laura's friends for a hand of cards. Laura claims that the painting is actually still hanging in her home and various people have asked to buy it, but she refuses to sell it to them for fear of what may happen to the new owners. She has also stated that if she had the opportunity to do the painting again, she definitely wouldn't have painted the stagecraft. For my personal opinions, a lot of the stories associated with these paintings are anecdotal and therefore don't really mean anything tangible as I haven't had any personal experiences with them. A number of the haunted activities around the stagecraft painting could be perfectly natural and could be just because it's an eerie painting. I've also personally never had an experience with a haunted object to my knowledge, so find it hard to add weight to stories of cursed objects or items. However, this could all change if I do ever have an experience with a haunted painting or other haunted object. Anyway, that's this video done. Let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comment section below. You can watch this video next on our recent investigation of the UK's most haunted museum where replicas of some of these paintings actually live. Bye. The couple would even go as far as setting up a motion tri motion?